Hey, greetings everybody. This is Masani from Masani Live, and we are live at um, with my sister from Body Culinary. So we are here. <laughs> yes, we're here, and uh, today we're continuing uh, in light of all the questions that were asked before. We're going to be sharing today about troubleshooting. What do you do when you want to eat healthy and your partner doesn't, right? So it's easy for folks to um, sabotage themselves and to sabotage each other. So you may be really desiring to, um, oh, we got some friends coming. So you may really be desiring to make changes to the way that you're uh, eating, but your partner is not on board. So um, what are some of the things that you've experienced? You want to make sure that you're eating healthy, perhaps. You've gotten a diagnosis from the doctor um, that is not good. Maybe you've been diagnosed with uh, cancer or diabetes or the doctor's telling your cholesterol is way too high. Um, the numbers are way too high. Maybe you're experiencing uh, erectile dysfunction if you're a man and thinking like, well, what the heck can I do to improve my circulation? You know, if your arteries all clogged, there's nothing like a consequence to really bring you present um, to what's going on. So I think that's real. I like to be really simple and realistic on what's going on in people's real, uh, their real everyday lives. Because every day there are people that want to eat healthier. And if we don't use the title vegan, you know, um, all those plant based and cruelty free, quite often you may be the only person in your work area or in your household or in your family or in your relationship that is really on board with changing the way that you eat because you have a consequence um, that you're facing and it may be a sense of urgency. It may not be the same sense of urgency for somebody's partner. So, um, you know, as uh, sisters and usually uh, the person that's usually the big food uh, prepping person, my sister, she usually wanna, she'll, she'll eat everything. But um, what has been your real life experience with wanting to eat, um, well, with me wanting to eat healthy and you just like, not so much wanting to eat healthy. Well, for me, thank you, my <laughs> sister. For me, the hardest part was um, being honest with myself. I basically, honestly, uh, didn't want to change. And she was on another frequency, and I was on another one because I was so comfortable with eating my regular cooked food and all that other stuff. So to be honest with you, I wasn't ready to change, but when you have somebody with a very strong personality, um, and also she educated me. I think what, what, what the real thing is that she educated me and showed me uh, some YouTube videos about, you know, eating a certain way and, and the benefits from it. So I wanted the benefits, but I wasn't, I wasn't really on board with the work. So I, to be honest with you, that's how we used to get into arguments, bad arguments, because she was really, and I had fibroids, I, you know, she was really trying to help me and I wasn't open to being helped. But I wanted the benefits, but I didn't want to, to deal with um, the reality that uh, I was making myself sick and I, and I was blaming her. And I was using her helping me um, as a decoy to hide behind me not wanting to change, you know? So well, now, in all fairness, I have to say now, now, in all fairness, um, we both have worked um, for, I don't know, for several, numerous decades in the fitness industry. Um, both of us are huge eaters mm -hmm. like we love to, to eat you know I'm also classically and professionally trained as a chef so I'm the type of person to take myself to a nice restaurant and I you know some people have drinking buddies you know I had an eating buddy so I like to go out um, and dine I like good quality food um, I like to go out and experience like really beautiful food but I'm very clear I want to have that experience every day and I'm also very clear of the why like I'm looking at amputations in my family amputations of legs amputation of breasts, um, cancer, um, very common to have folks uh, 300 pounds, 400 pounds um, in my family. So I'm clear the way I like to eat, that is waiting around the corner for me. And at the same time, I still like to eat. And as somebody that's competed in fitness, I don't like to diet. You know, so there were times we were eating uh, health, lots of health junk. We were eating, I'm going to have those gigantic bags of popcorn. She had one, I had one. And we're eating, but we still look pretty good because we were working out um, in fitness. So I'm usually the one like leading the charge in terms of being creative with the food, cute packaging See, for the food. My thing too, for those of you out there who can relate to either one of us, maybe you're a combination of the two, is that I 
had a cloak and dagger situation where I was hiding behind being a fitness trainer and I actually worked at Reebok as one of the top trainers at Reebok on the Upper West Side. So I, since, since I was the top trainer and I, and I was looking good and I was much more bigger than I was, I actually felt that I didn't need to um, <laughs> listen to her because I'm top trainer and I'm making this much money and you know, I'm number one. So my ego was controlling my health. Like I didn't really want to deal with um, not really um, taking responsibility because society has told me you're a top trainer at Reebok, you're making this much money, so who needs to listen to that? You know, and plus I was eating vegetarian, I was a vegan, but I was eating a lot of processed vegan food and that's another thing, like I was eating the soy chips and I was like, you know, the elitist soy, you know, I was eating uh, Amy's vegan pizza. So I was a vegan and I actually thought I was better than meat eaters and I thought I was better than everybody out there because I'm, I'm vegan. But well, also because you had so much muscle. Yeah, so fit. basically since I had a lot of muscle and all that stuff. But also with that being said, I hid behind being a trainer and, and giving other people advice. I was giving other people on advice on getting healthy, and I I was you know getting paid for that, and also I was a vegan, eating a lot of processed food, and I was ignorant to the fact of what a vegan is because a lot of times I, I, I my definition of vegan was not eating meat, so I was eating a lot of bread. I wasn't eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. I was eating a lot of bread. I was eating a lot of pizza. I was eating a lot of rice. I was eating a lot of like you part of it. This is a good decision. I was eating a lot of tofu. I was eating a lot of uh, uh, that 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 uh, that that texturized TV, 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 TV. vegetable protein. And what happened was with me, I started getting sick. But I kept thinking, oh well, I'm vegan, so I can't be getting sick. But I wasn't getting sick. But you know, you bring up a good point. So a good distinction to make, and I love to make distinctions to keep everything very simple. And this mm -hmm. is why. For years, I'm just operating more than operating on vegan. I'm operating on my grandma Lou, which is simplicity. So my grandma Lou feeds people beautiful, delicious food and walk away, right? right? So I would consciously remember, I would say, let's not use the term vegan if we stay focused because the label, I think, can make us go into like ego tripping. Yeah. That I'm the label. Right. And then you, you think about the identifying with the label and not your actual behaviors. So you can be vegan and be eating tons of nuts, which are actually very expensive. Right, so I think the label, or even saying like, um, I'm a trainer, so I don't have to eat healthy. Yeah. I can do steroids, and I look this way, so I don't have to do right. You know, and I'm so giving, and I'm getting labels. paid bucks, big bucks, to give other people advice. So what and do you I become mean, You know, the elitist. Right. And so oh, in elitist. that, you wind up getting got because then you're not paying attention to perhaps those that fitness was not a problem because we enjoyed we enjoyed the, we enjoy the fitness, so that was fun. And then I enjoy eating and I enjoy being a scientist in the food prep area. So all of us have to look at other things like um, overeating or if you have an eating buddy and both of you eat to de-stress and for enjoyment. So the label vegan is not speaking to the mindset and the behaviors of gluttony, of not sleeping, of, you know, it could be an area that we look at because we feel like we're good at it. Also, we live mm -hmm. in a world of hypocrisy where it's do as I say and not as I do. Um, a lot of times, because I was an elite trainer at Reebok, I bought into a lot of labels. And what happens when you buy into other people's labels, you get got. Because you really start to think that you have arrived, that you are the one. You know, you are the guru. It's like being in religion where you're the priest or the, the, the one in charge. And I had to really humble myself and I had to really come asking my sister for forgiveness for my ego um, maniac outburst. <laughs> and um, yeah. and then the troubleshooting that, what were the strategies that I can say, now I can say as a strategist, because I'm thinking as, um, as a mother and as someone that really, I'm very passionate about feeding my people, my community, even my clients. I just made a decision, I'm not gonna feed my people poison, I refuse. And then quite often, most of the time there's a mutiny. Mm -hmm. So I'm very clear, either I'm going to go on their side, which I can't, because then I'm going to need to get surgery and get mm -hmm. cut open, and I like to eat, or they're going to come on my side. So my thing is to make sure that you always had like uh, beautiful cloth napkins, spill-proof containers, yeah. make sure when you're ready that, you know, when people have an out-of-body experience that the food is already there, prepared. I don't go anywhere without food, and I know my food has to be prettier than other people's. I know um, it can't be too expensive and sustainable, so... 
that to me, I think my brain is wired that way. See, and as a me, mother, I'm just saying in terms of the troubleshooting and right. The, and but the see, even though she was doing it, I was still on the down 